Hey guys, I wanna welcome you to day number one of honest conversations about things that matter. Before we get started, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And yes, I am talking about the one over my right shoulder next to the baby lion. Um, yes, I am recording this video in my daughter's room, but it used to be my recording space. If we could cut away to show you what it looked like. One of the things that always blows my mind is the fact, yeah, it was super dope and now it's super cute. And so don't get distracted by the cuteness. Just imagine that you're in a petting zoo having really heartfelt conversations with people who like to have deep conversations. I don't know what you need to pretend. Today's conversation is all about the idea of hate in agreement. And a person actually came on Instagram, shot me a DM with a question. And here's what they asked. Honest thoughts about Christians and the LGBTQIA community. How can you be an advocate when the group creates a culture of whether you are for us or 100% completely against us? I think that this question is actually a really powerful one and it goes on um, into other areas of life. This conversation really started to get brewing in my mind several years ago when our government was beginning to talk and work through laws that would legalize gay marriage. And it seemed like at that time that both sides of the equation, those who were pro-gay marriage and those who were not, were the enemy of the other. It, it was almost as if you couldn't have this middle ground of saying, I disagree or I agree and I'm for you, but I'm not for this. Like It's like either side. It's like they couldn't say, hey, I'm for gay marriage, but I don't hate you. Or I'm against gay marriage, but I don't hate you. It wasn't even presented as an option. A lot of times people feel like if you disagree with me in one thing, you're against me, you don't stand with me, you're my enemy. My personal perspective is that that's not reality at all. A lot of times in life, people are not going to agree with you 100% of the time. And that doesn't mean that they hate you or they're against you. Webster's Dictionary says this, that hate is an intense hostility and aversion usually derived from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. So it's intense hostility and aversion. And if you wanna know what aversion is, that's just a feeling of repugnance towards something or a desire to avoid or turn from something. Hatred is hostility towards something and turning away from something in anger or uh, fear or a sense of injury. But what if we all agreed that if we disagree, we would still remain. That even if I don't agree with your lifestyle, I don't agree with your opinion, I don't agree with your worldview, I'll still be here for you if you need me. I'll still be here for you. I can't necessarily agree with you or stand with you on things that I don't agree with, but when life gets real, when you're hungry, when you're in need of a friend, just living life, going to work together, I can be here for you. That I'm not going to be hostile towards you. I'm not going to allow my convictions to turn into violence or anger or doing hurtful things to inflict pain upon you. No, I'm going to be here for you to bless you, to love you, to, to be a friend to you. I've had friends throughout my whole life that I haven't agreed with things that they've done. I've had friends that have gone out and they've slept around with girls. That's not my lifestyle. And I don't think that's right at all. But that doesn't mean I haven't been with them. It doesn't mean that I haven't been a friend to them. It doesn't mean that I couldn't stand with them and support them in their moment of need. It doesn't mean I haven't gone to work with them and played sports with them and, and had conversations with them. Not at all. We've been friends, but that doesn't mean I had to agree with everything they did or everything they believed. I've had friends of different beliefs. I've had friends of different, uh, of non-belief that they would say they're atheists. I've had people that I've worked with that have been so diverse it's crazy, but that doesn't mean that we've hated each other, but it also doesn't mean that we've agreed on everything either. And I think that's the false narrative on our generation is that if you don't agree with me, you're a hateful person. And in reality, that's not how life works. This is a thought that I want to leave you with. When it comes to disagreement, first of all, I think it's valuable to assume the best about people. Um, just because someone thinks differently than you doesn't mean that they hate you and they're against you. It's valuable to note where their perspective and where their worldview is coming from. Don't just assume they're against you. Really give them a listen and hear where they're coming from. And maybe even if you don't choose to agree, you can at least have a little more sympathy for where the other person's coming from. In the instance of gay marriage and that whole debate, you have two groups of people, some who are affected and not affected at all, and they're just throwing out opinions. But then you had some real people in the homosexual community that had a desire to be married. And you had people in religious communities and uh, that really had a, a firm conviction on what marriage was. And so they weren't going to bend that to, to say that this should be celebrated and, and redefined in law. And I think in both of those instances, it's important for each group, first of all, for the, the individuals in the Christian community to be able to understand that the people who are going through this movement, trying to get gay marriage legalized, they're not just throwing out an opinion. This is about their life. This is about 
the desires and feelings of their heart that they want to move forward in expressing. And whether you agree with it or not, it's important to understand that it's not just a battle of opinions. This is real people with real feelings and real hopes and dreams and desires. And so when you're throwing out information in your opinion, you're not just giving an opinion. You're meeting people in their experience. And so being present and listening, and even if you don't change your mind, being there to show love to people, even if you disagree with them and not being hostile and trying to make them out to be the enemy. And if you're on the flip side of this equation, on the pro-gay marriage side, it's important for you to understand that everyone, including you, have set standards of morally acceptable and unacceptable sexual expressions. If you don't believe me, I actually over uh, oversaw this engagement where someone got so mad and so angry because there was someone who tried to compare incest, pedophilia, incest is sex within, mar uh, within family, pedophilia, which is a minor with, with a person who's of age in, in homosexual uh, marriage. And they got so mad because they were like, how could you dare you know, compare these? I'm not here to compare them or anything like that. All I'm showing is that person who was for gay marriage got angry because they had made a judgment call that those other sexual expressions were inappropriate and not to be celebrated. And so for them, they weren't willing to see that this person who was against gay marriage also had similar convictions, but they just weren't the same conviction. And so they made them out to be the enemy, forgetting that they too would could be seen as the enemy. And so I think it's important for both groups to realize their common humanity, that wow, I might not agree with this expression that you're fighting for, but I can stand with you. And on the other side, they might say, I might not have the same convictions, but I do have convictions. And so I can choose to understand how your convictions don't allow you to agree with me. Now it's hard when it's you personally, but the truth is, is that that's how you can move forward in love and at least in some sort of civility instead of moving into hatred and hostility. In conclusion of this thought that matters, you do not have to agree with people to love people. There's a lot of people in life who are not gonna agree with everything you're for, you practice, you do, you stand for, or you believe, and it doesn't mean they hate you. Let's assume the best about each other. Let's stand with each other, find the common ground, allow people into our lives who might not be the same as us, believe the same, practice the same, or agree the same. And we're going to open our world to a whole lot more love than we would have experienced otherwise. You guys, thanks for tuning in today. We'll be back tomorrow with another honest thought about things that matter. Peace out.